Hello YouTube, it is Raphael from XX Raphael Productions and as promised I am going to be reviewing The Flash Season 7 and just before we begin the video however, there is definitely going to be spoilers past this point so if you have not yet finished the season, I recommend you click out of this video now or if you don't really care about spoilers, you can proceed but this is gonna be the warning, okay? So let's go ahead and get right to the review now since we've passed the warning point. I'm going to be splitting this review into two sections, okay? And the reason why I am doing this is because Eric Wallace, the showrunner for Season 6 and for Season 7, has split the season's storylines into two. So, for the first half where we are covering Episode 1 to Episode 11, that is a Forces storyline, or you can say the Forces arc, Forces saga, whatever. Then Episodes 12 to episodes 18 will be considered the Godspeed storyline of season 7. So, just like season 6, how they split into graphic novels, I'm going to be splitting, I'm sorry, I'm going to be splitting my review into two so that we can um, kind of dissect and also compare which storyline was done better and which storyline was worse. Okay, so let's get right to this review, The Flash season 7, 2021, alright? So to begin, let's go ahead and start with the Forces Saga, so we are gonna cover Episodes 1 to Episodes 11. Alright, so here we go, we're gonna start the review for the first half of Season 7, the Forces storyline, okay? So, the first three episodes of this section is actually wrapping up the first, I'm sorry, it's wrapping up the last season's villain, so that was Mirror Monarch being defeated, and... I'm going to first say that this section, the first two episodes were decent. I think episode two was the best of the bunch when it comes to the um, first three episodes. Because I'm going to say that although I include this as a Forces saga, I will still say that the um, third episode is when it really kicks off. When the ending has a cliffhanger in that Barry rebirthing the Speed Force actually creates all the other forces. And that's where the story kicks off, okay? So... But what did I really think about this particular section is that the way the villain was defeated by, um, I guess you could say it was very anticlimactic. Like, there are, in the previous season finales, like season 5, season 4, like you can feel like the it's, everything is building up to a climatic moment. And even if they may have been underwhelming, it still felt like a season finale. So, episode 3 was supposed to be the, the season 6 finale originally, so... I was shocked that um, the way they did this episode was nowhere near as good as I was expecting it to be. So, I mean, that's not really a surprise considering I wasn't really a fan of season 6 anyway. So, I was not I was just like hoping... I'm just glad really that it only lasted 3 episodes into season 7. So, I'd say definitely the speed of thought, which is episode 2. That's right before the season finale, supposedly of season 6. So season 7 episode 2, The Speed of Thought, was a great episode because in here they, I guess they really took away Barry's like, um, um, EQ, but they raised his IQ like almost Devo-like levels. So Flash really got stuff done, no drama, like the drama definitely plagued season 7. I don't just mean the Forces storyline, but it also plagued the Godspeed part in general. I'll get to the Godspeed one later on the section 2 of this review anyway, so yeah. So let's go ahead and I'm talking about the way, so Eva was defeated, well she wasn't actually like killed but she um, she was let go by Barry and Iris so that concludes the Mirrorverse storyline. And now that leads into an interesting cliffhanger and that is when the forces are born and then the rest of the episodes like episodes 4 to episodes 11 are all dealing with these new mysterious forces that Barry and Iris created when they're rebirthing the speed force and alright so yeah. Basically, this is also, that entire section also puts an end to Nash Wells' character as he sacrifices himself to, um, you know, to rebirth the Speed Force as well. So that also, unfortunately, takes away Harry Wells and all the other previous Wells doppelgangers as well. So that's, that's one moment I actually liked. Like, the episode was mediocre, but I liked that moment there. Alright, so, now on to the rest of the Forces saga now that it's been reborn, the Speed Force is reborn. You can also come. We can also consider the Speed Force as the somewhat primary antagonist of the Forces storyline, but um, it does get a happy ending anyway. So, 
But so yeah, I guess that's all well and done. But the thing is though, the way that they did this storyline was just horrendous. And what I mean by that, let's go ahead and first show you the CGI, all right? So these are some examples of the horrendous CGI that plagued the first half of season seven. Like, I don't even personally like, I don't even know what they were trying to do with this. Like I, they seemed like it was too ambitious for their own good, I guess. But however, I will definitely admit this, that the guy who plays Psych, uh, I think his name was B Bashir like in the, in the show. I don't know the actor's name in real life, but he's the Sage Force. And the way they did his scenes were good. I'll be honest here. Now, the CGI, again, like the way his face is, it kind of looks odd, but either way, the horror scenes when he's showing the main character's fears and I guess the horror type of vibes, because the Flash has gone in that direction in the first half of season 6 as well during the Bloodwork saga. So when it comes to the Sage Force and the scenes that he got on, in his episode, like his respective episodes, that one was pretty good. So that's one positive i guess when it comes to this but overall though like i said before they could do they could have done much more like they what it feels like they really scraped the bare minimum overall for these kind of characters like like if you think about it the the entire idea on paper it sounds great like we have all these forces manifested into people like that sounds good like i that's very comic book like but the way that they did this it just didn't work and the it was it's even made worse by the fact that a lot of these fighting moments like um are usually they usually like resort to talking down the enemy unlike in previous seasons where they actually have a good fight like there were there were still some good fights but it's kind of like they they downplayed it a lot and they overplayed the um like the, the emotional drama a lot more that's the, definitely contributed to why this first half was, was so boring i i actually like got up to like maybe episode 5 episode 6 or so and i was just like i wonder what direction eric wallace is trying to take the show in because i i already knew like i already had a feeling that it wouldn't be as good because like of season 6 i did i did not like season 6 but like i still though let me just say that i actually did prefer season 7 to season 6 so that's one good thing i guess but yeah so let's go ahead and talk about the rest of this saga so the the speed force is trying to kill these other forces because they are trying to kill her. That's her justification for it. And she's trying to get Barry to help her. Now, Barry, obviously... Now, let me go ahead and say that the Speed Force is actually Nora Allen. That's She takes the form of Nora Allen. That's what the Speed Force is. Now, the one thing I did not like is how these forces refer to Barry and Iris as mom and dad. Now, if you recall, I made a video a while... Not a while back. Actually, a couple days back where... I talked about The Flash Season 7 being disappointing. I will link that down in the description below, actually, if you want to check it out. I said something about that these kind of moments where the, the, the um, forces are calling Barry and Iris mom and dad or their parents or whatever. As cringy as that was, I could see what Eric Wallace was trying to do since they are trying to set up Barry and Iris' future children, future families. So it's like they're trying to get these to to learn parental like lessons like they're they're becoming better parents along the way as the forces also be the antagonist for this half of the season that's one interesting concept i actually liked that but it, that's the thing the concept i liked but the actual execution of the idea was a big failure i i was as i said before i i know what they're, i know what they were trying to do but it just did not work period i I know I said that in my other video, but I am going to say it here again because that part is very important just in case people might say, oh, well, Raphael, you don't know what they're trying to do. So I let me tell you, I know what they're trying to do. So I just think that the way they could have executed it could have been, def I'm sorry, the way they executed this could definitely have been much better than what we saw on screen, okay? And I just wish, even if they even if they wanted that to be the case, I just wish they toned down the mom and dad thing. Like even, even in the Godspeed like half of this season, they when the forces occasionally return, they referred to still referred to them as mom and dad, and it just took me out of the moment. I, I tried my hardest not to, but it just didn't work. I, I promise you, I don't know why they did that, but yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about the characters now, since we've already talked about the forces and. Now, the, the forces, though, the actors, actors are great, the actors and actresses are great for the forces, so 
it when it comes to why I am not a fan of how they were executed, it's nothing to do with the actors. It's more of the script. At the it's no secret that this show's writing is the weakest point of the whole show. Like, what keeps this show interesting is the fight scenes, the character um, development, the world building are all what keeps this show watchable. But when it comes to the actual plot, though, that's when it usually suffers the most. It's been like, it's been this case ever since season three, so I'm not really surprised anyway. So yeah. Now let's go in and talk about the. Okay, so I already talked about the forces. Let's go in and talk about the characters. Now, honestly. I always felt that the characters, like, this season, they just, I don't know, like, it feels like the characters, like, interactions, they got less enjoyable to watch this season. Now, like I said before, I'm not a fan of season 6, but even then, at least, when they were building up to the Crisis on Infinite Earths, it still showed their, like, chemistry that they built up over the past 5 or 6 seasons, right? So, that's what, that's one thing I wish season 7 did better on. Now, it's still a better season, but... I think that it's missing that charm that it used to have in the previous seasons, and that includes even the first half of season six as well. Okay, like what I mean by that is that you compare, look at like Candice, um, I'm sorry, Candice Patton. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. I hope she look at her as Iris, compare her to the earlier season, and you can just tell that compared to the earlier seasons, it just feels like the actors are getting bored, for a lack of a better word. That's how it feels like to me. Like I. When I'm watching them on screen, I'm just like, hmm, like, are they enjoying their job anymore? Because, like, I think the most consistent actors were Barry, so that's Grant Gustin, and Tom Cavanaugh. So, unfortunately, this season, Tom Cavanaugh and Carlos Valdez are no longer series regulars. So, Dr. Wells, like I said earlier, already left the show. But even then, even as he wanted to leave the show, his, his acting... Tom Cavanaugh's acting would never suffer. It was it was good all seven seasons. So I don't know whether that's a good excuse or whatever, since this show has gone on for seven seasons now. So I guess it's understandable that they're losing interest. But still, I even Tom Cavanaugh, despite wanting to leave the show, his acting never got worse. It was always good. Tom Cavanaugh was always great at acting. So I don't know whether that excuse flies for the rest of the cast. All right, because so far. The only, like, enjoyable, like, character so far is, like, this definitely Barry Allen, that's Grant Gustin. He's still the most consistently good actor out of the cast we've got so far. And probably to an extent, um, who's that character? I think, uh, yeah, some other character was, uh, yeah, I think Chester. Like, I, I actually wasn't a fan of Chester at first. Like, I, I thought he was, like, you know, like, annoying at some moments, but still, they were... He grew on me on that episode where they went back in time and Chester talks to his dead dad. I'm sorry, Chester talks to his dead father. So at least that moment kind of redeemed his character and he he just improved overall. So definitely Barry Allen and then Chester um, P. Runk, those two characters are like the consistently like interesting ones. And it feels like the rest of the characters are just there, especially Allegra doesn't feel like they don't, they don't know what to do with her character really. Like, I mean... She does improve as well in the Godspeed saga. I'll get to that in the second section, as promised. So uh, let me just say that for the first half, they really screwed up a lot of things, like a potential. This this section had potential because this it, it feels it was um a lot of like potential comic book like you got forces being manifested. All of that could have been amazing, but uh, well, that's what that's all well and done. It's been disappointing, but. I guess the final episode, Family Matters Part 2, like, we had the whole final fight in the Speed Force, and, again, like I said before, the CGI is a laughable mess, like, I'm talking about, the CGI is a mess this season, I, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the way it was resolved, I, I definitely enjoyed the way the Speed Force was stopped, unlike the way the Mirror Verse Saga ended, that one was just trash, like, I, the way they concluded the Mirror Verse storyline was bad, so I'm glad that they, they improve. I'm sorry. As bad as the forces storyline also was, at least the ending was somewhat okay. Like the forces, they stopped the speed force. They um they turned good. This was this was more believable than the last time, so I'm okay with that one. And then they all live happily ever after in some kind of weird afterlife or whatever. So yeah. Then we get <laughs> the hilarious moment where Barry goes, "I like that impulse or whatever," and I just like. I was just like, ooh, get it, Barry, you know, I, so, I was satisfied with the ending, but for the, um, actual storyline as a whole, I thought it was a, a disappointment, so, 
Definitely the Forest storyline was a flop, period. I'll give that a, probably a 5 out of 10, or maybe a 4 out of 10, to be honest. I, I expected much more, and I was excited, though, for the next half, because I know Godspeed is coming back, as confirmed by Eric Wallace, alright? And there is this other character, before I conclude this section of the review, this other character, uh, I'm not sure I pronounced his name right, Chill, uh, Chill Blaine. Um, I guess some people, a lot of people actually hated this character, but when it comes to this romance with Killer Frost, I uh, actually, I, I wasn't like as bothered by it as many people were. I do think that they could have fixed the pacing though, because the pacing, it, it kind of interrupted. It feels like there were some scenes where it interrupted the flow of the story by inserting Chillblain and Killer Frost in it, but when it comes to the actual romance though, I was okay with it. I didn't hate it as much as the others did, so I guess that part was uh was actually okay, I guess. So no hard feelings on that character. Uh he actually returns on the on the Godspeed storyline as well, so I'll get into him as well for that section. Alright, so that also we also I also some other cool moments for this before we end this. So the original Wells that we saw that was killed by the reverse flash, he also makes a return. Although I wish they did more with his character because I was really hyped at the end of Season 7, Episode 2, and they wasted him. They wasted the original Wells. That was like, I was just like, wow, come on, man. Like, I, you waited seven years to see the original Wells, and that's it? He, that's all you do with him? Like, uh, come on, like, Flash Riders, you can do better than this. I've seen you do better than this before. Come on, like, I, I, and that's, that's what I mean when I say wasted potential. That yeah, this season was full of it, really. Uh, anyway, so that do that does it with the Forces storyline. I would give it a 4 out of 10. So it wasn't that good, but let's go ahead and get right into the Godspeed saga. And let's go ahead and review. So it's a speedster villain. And I'm sure that will get many old fans hyped. People who are excited for that. So let's get right into that review right now. Okay, so here we are now with the Godspeed storyline review. So... Like I said before, a speedster villains are usually the best villains in the show, and it's been proven again by this. So, the writing did only improved a little bit from the Forces saga, but because the villains are speedster, they were able to write interesting fight scenes, and also they were actually able to pose a credible threat to Barry and the rest of Team Flash, all because the speedster villains are, are an actual threat. So, yeah. Like I said before, while it's not really quality television like I was hoping for, like back in Season 1 or 2, this was definitely an improvement over the Forces storyline in general. Okay, so, the final episode, just episode 18, Thawn actually makes a return at the last episode. Now, I was very, very excited that he was back. I was like, oh, I was just like clapping, you know, on my when I saw that happen, but I was just like wondering though, like how he came back at first, but then I realized that the Speed Force must have rebirthed, I mean, not rebirthed, but the Speed Force in that episode must have kind of reconstructed Thon's body, because in Season 6, the last time we saw Reverse Flash, he was negative tachyons before being expelled from Nash Wells, that was when Reverse Flash was possessing Nash Wells, okay, so that was a pretty cool moment, and then we got this interesting moment here where Godspeed actually creates sort of like a lightsaber sword with lightning and I was just like hmm very interesting moves like we have not seen this before like I haven't really I mean the only um the only actual time that we have seen something similar is when Zoom in season two catches the lightning and throws it back at Barry so that's one other time that I've seen it but other than that we've never really seen them you know wield lightning as a weapon aside from throwing lightning but we haven't seen them do a lights like the lightsaber type of fight so that was a I don't know how to feel about that, it kind of felt weird, but I guess comic books in general are kind of weird, so uh, I can excuse that, so I just I was just glad to see Reverse Flash come back after a long time. And now, let's ask for the rest of the, um, so I'll talk about the rest of this later, let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the Godspeed saga. Okay, so, it is revealed that Central City is gonna, is actually having a Godspeed war, like the, there's army of clones fighting each other. And we also have Kramer and Joe kind of like, I guess, they're looking into some kind of case. And there is a kind of side story while the rest of Team Flash is kind of fighting the Godspeed War. And then this, this Forces saga, 
they they actually I liked how they were utilized here on like last time, like Nora Allen, the Speed Force Nora coming back and giving all the speedsters an energy boost, for example. Jay Garrick finally making a return, and the best parts really Bart Allen and Nora West Allen. Now, this is something that I liked. Okay, the actress of Nora West Allen, she did a good job contrasting the character from season five to season seven. Okay, so. There is a drastic difference, although it's the same actress, there is a drastic difference in the way Nora West Allen acted in Season 5 and how she acted in Season 7. So, she did a good job contrasting the character to make it to make it evident to the viewers that they are very different characters despite having the same face, alright? Bart Allen, Impulse, uh, I guess the actor was Jordan, I think Jordan Fisher, yeah, Jordan Fisher was the actor. And yeah, he played Impulse pretty well. I honestly though, he played Impulse better in the I guess the season finale. Like the first introduction episode, I didn't like him. I I, I think he was kind of like I know he's meant to be impulsive, but he was more annoying than charming at the first time, but then on the season finale he actually improved in the acting. So I good on him for that. And good on the actress of Norwest Allen. I guess it was um Jessica Park Parker Kennedy, yeah. Canadian actress. All right, so she did good as Nora Allen again, just like in season five. And Kramer was revealed to be a meta as well. So I guess it kind of makes sense when it, when they are when it was showing us the side story of Joe West and Kramer trying to figure out like you know the mystery and stuff. So I like the way it all the plot threads came together, and I also loved the way Team Flash was was or all utilized in the fight, just like in season five where. You know, Ralph, Iris, Barry, Nora, and Cisco, and Killer Frost are all fighting Reverse Flash. I liked how they all utilized, like, not no one was useless in the final episode. That's what I liked about that one, alright? So, it's not perfect, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but it is definitely a step up compared to the first half of the season, alright? So, one thing that I did not like, though, is how it's mecha vibe, okay? This is probably an unpopular opinion, I know... Cisco left the well Cisco left as a series regular at episode 12 the Godspeed saga Started at episode 12, but it Godspeed himself showed up at episode 15 just to get out of the way so Mecha vibe felt pointless because you know you realize Cisco Gave up his powers in season 5 to have a normal life with his girlfriend um, and then Now it just kind of feels like if he's gonna be vibe again like why don't he just keep his powers and learn to control it rather than completely giving it up, you know? Because, like, something like Vibe, you have you have a powers to open portals to any place in the multiverse. You have, you can fire energy blasts, you can teleport, not, no, not teleport, but you can, you can open portals to a given location, like, instantly. So I don't know why Cisco would ever give that up. Like, if he was just gonna come back and become Mecha Vibe anyway, so... I just really didn't like the way they handled Cisco's character this season. In fact, not just this season, but his the way his character was handled ever since the end of season three was already not that good. So, eh, I guess it's just just a result of an ongoing problem with Cisco's character. All right. So now on to August Hart, the main villain of the second half of season seven. All right, August Hart. So what do I think about August Hart, the Godspeed? All right, the real Godspeed. Well. One thing I'd like to mention before I get into his character is that he was actually recasted this season compared to season 5 where we had a different actor that time. So it's still the same character, like um, in terms of the show in, in universe, it's still the same character. Just think of this like Iron Man when they recasted Rhodey, for example. That's a good example of a recast without changing the character in general, so yeah. Okay, so... I just feel like they could have given Godspeed more t more screen time because look, the Godspeed saga started episode twelve, but we wasted that with um the Esperanza storyline and Allegra's side character arc. So we also well I guess Chester though, Chester actually improved this season. And almost one funny thing I like to mention is um Allegra's speech not well, not speech more like her quote at the final episode where she goes like she's tired of the pep talks <laughs> and I'm just like yeah I agree Allegra like the pep talks need to come to an end I swear this season was full of it but yeah okay so 
that's one thing I wish they gave Godspeed more episodes. Like, I know that his storyline started in episode 12, but we never really saw Godspeed until episode 15, so I just wish that they gave him more episodes. Like, if they... I was thinking at first that they would continue the Godspeed saga into season 8, but then they actually ended up with arresting him and putting him in Iron Heights. So, I guess that's the end of Godspeed. Well, it was finally... It's finally nice to see Godspeed at last after... Season 5, Season 6, and now finally we saw the real Godspeed, but still. I, although the fun coming back, now, now, here we go. So, like I said before, Godspeed was kind of wasted, because, like, they could have built him up more in more, like, as we were leading up to the final fight, instead of him being the generic, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take your speed bear, okay, I'm gonna take your speed barrier, or I'm gonna destroy the city, you know, just a typical villain, really. Now, his motive, this was revealed, he wanted organic speed instead of having artificial speed, so at least that connects with his storyline back in Season 5 where he's trying to make a velocity serum that lasts forever, right? So that, I guess that, that makes sense, that connects with his introduction episode. Now, Thawne coming back. This is gonna be good, folks, this is the best part of the episode, Thawne makes a return, and... I liked August Hart, like, saying stuff like he wants to be evil rather than just turning good. Like, I was hoping that, you know, with Cecile saying that August was re feeling remorse, I didn't... I was hoping, I was really hoping that that didn't happen, but I'm glad it did not happen. I, I actually was like, ooh, okay, so August Hart is still evil deep down, alright? So that was a good twist, and now Reverse Flash coming back. They did some really interesting um, Speedstar fight choreography this episode, alright? Look at the... In this picture right now that I'm showing you, they actually conjure up lightning swords, so they're like a similar speedster type of fight, but it's kind of like Star Wars combined. And although that was kind of ridiculous, but I was just, I guess I was just glad to see Reverse Flash come back, it's been a long time, so I'm not gonna really hate on this part. And the best part definitely is when Reverse Flash turns on Barry, but then Barry like, just goes like, oh, I got much faster than you thought, and I'm just like... You know, I was just clapping, that was just so good, like, I, the, like I said before, no matter, no matter how bad this show becomes, Reverse Flash and Bear, I'm sorry, The Flash and Reverse Flash's rivalry story continues to be the show, the show's strongest central point, that was just, like, the best part, I was hyped up, like, I, I do wish it lasted longer, the Reverse Flash coming back kind of felt shoehorned in, rather than, rather than, like, I wish they had a, more of a bigger fight, I know Barry, I know Barry humiliated him, but I wish they had more of a better fight than just him throwing Thon into, like, the other direction. But, eh, I mean, good to have him back, I guess, but still. I, I, now I wonder how Reverse Flash, like, if they don't get back the original actor, Matt um, Lester, I don't know how they're gonna pull off the 2024 fight before Flash vanishes in Crisis. And yes, don't get me wrong, I know the Crisis is over in 2019, but still, it doesn't mean that they cannot... Um, pull up another fight in 2024 just without the crisis happening okay so yeah that was I guess I was satisfied overall with how it ended but not fully satisfied with the way the Godspeed storyline was done it doesn't really make up for the last badly written episodes it was still disappointing but Reverse Flash as all well, just like how he um was the best part of season 5 he was also the best part of the final episode of season 7 okay so Definitely a major, well, not a major improvement, definitely a better um, half of Season 7 than the Forces Saga. And I liked how the Speed Force gave all of them a power boost as well. That was pretty good. But yeah, okay, so what do I think about Season 7? Well, definitely thought that this could have been done better, all right? Now, Kramer might be an interesting character in the future seasons. She apparently can mimic other metahuman abilities. That's how she was able to save Joe when Godspeed clone tried to kill him in the beginning of the episode, so I'm just like, ooh, okay. And then the Flash family fighting around. See, like I said before, I know that the Forces storyline where they are trying to call Barry and Iris mom and dad, it's, it was all just to set up their future family and stuff, so it all came together in a nice way, but unfortunately, the moments leading up to that were just badly written and could have been executed better, right? So... Not a bad final episode, but the rest of the episodes were not really as good, though. Okay, so yeah. Hopefully we see more Kramer and Godspeed storyline. I can assume he's done. He's already in Iron Heights. That I guess that's over. 
and the forces Nora like Speed Force Nora was pretty good as always. I'm glad the actress has more to do now rather than just being the um the dead parent all the time. So yeah, okay. Now as for season seven, my final rating. So the forces storyline would be probably a four out of ten. I really did not like that one too much. I, I, and now let's go ahead and say the Godspeed storyline would be maybe a six out of ten. So it's not not a major improvement, but definitely a better. All right. So yeah. So. I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this video now. Thank you very much for watching. That is the Flash Season 7 review, and Season 8 is premiering November 2021, so stay tuned for more. Raphael out, and I will see you soon.